How's it going everybody? I am back in Fallout 76 and today I'm going to be showing you how to track uh, silo codes, uh, key cards, also how to launch a nuke basically in general in Fallout 76. Uh, I do it solo so it is possible. Um, first you have to get far enough into the game to unlock the quest I am become death. That is the point where you can start tracking silo codes and key cards. Uh, for each silo, there's a 12-letter keyword that is used in deciphering the key or the codes for the nukes. There's a little bit of a tutorial down here that you could listen to, and then there's a computer that lets you track each individual silo's codes and a key card. So, for your information, you need a key card for every single code that you put in. You need eight silo codes and a key card for every code that you're going to enter. I'll show you guys that a little bit later. Um, but as you can see, it popped up as a quest called Hide and Seek and Destroy. You're basically going to go to the area and listen for the beeping. You can sort of track down where the enemy is going to be based on where that beeping is. And it's pretty easy to figure out. Once you kill the enemy, you'll go up and you'll see that they have a silo code on them. It doesn't matter which silo that you decide to track down, but you need eight for each specific silo. So you'll see here that I have all eight. And as I said, you'll n or I have one, I'm sorry. I need eight. So, uh, and as I said before, you need one key card for each code that you're going to put in. Um, if you mess up, you would need a new key card. Uh, what you're going to want to use, though, is there's a website called nukacrypt.com. That is what I used. You put in the letters that you have available in your uh, keyword with question marks in the spots that you don't uh, know. And then you're going to put the letters that you have on your silo codes and the numbers that you have on your silo codes in each individual spot that it tells you to. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to find uh, nukacrypt.com and then that will help you guys find out what codes you need for the uh, actual launching of the nuke. Um, I would suggest using it. It makes deciphering a little bit easier. If you want to try to decipher it yourself, that's fine. It will give you multiple options uh, that's why I suggest, for me, the two nukes that I've launched have given me four options each. Um, so, I would suggest trying to get four key cards so that you have a chance to put in each code in case they all fail. So once you, get in the, once you get into the nuclear silo, we're a little bit behind. I always use the turrets to kill most of the enemies in the area, and then I shut them off. And the first area, you have to get past the laser grids, where these enemies are coming out of, right there. So what you need to do is find an old biometric data card. It should be in the, like, the resonant area. But then you have to acquire your biometric data. So if you go... To the back area of this you'll find these machines you hop inside and it'll actually like put your biometric data into the like computer that you get or that you erase the biometric data from the original key card you found so you would erase it you'd go in the computer and you hit fabricate biometric id and it'll make the old biometric id card that you turned into a blank one now into a biometric ID card with your information on it. So then you head back to this area and you would register your card and head through the laser grid. Then you will continue on through the base until you get to the reactor room. Uh, just you'll keep following the hall, there will be some enemies. Uh, once you get to this point, this is when I would suggest either putting on a radiation suit or putting on power armor. Uh, up to this point, it's not necessary. You could wear it, but up to this point, I was really saving my uh, power armor and fusion cores. 
Uh, I didn't know how long this would take. It took me about an hour, hour and a half to do this by myself. Uh, once I get into each area, I usually hack a computer, turn on turrets, let them kill as much as I can. But once you get into the reactor room, you're going to shut down reactor and then begin repairs on the reactor. Uh, you're basically just going to listen in for pipes, uh, letting off steam, and you're going to run around the reactor and you're going to repair all these pipes. It doesn't cost you any resources or anything like that. Enemies will spawn in. Uh, and then there will be some enemies if you don't clear it out beforehand. I didn't. I was just trying to get this taken care of. Uh, Assaultrons are by far probably the worst enemies that spawn uh, in this area of the game, in the silos. But there's probably a dozen pipes that you have to repair. They're kind of scattered. Like I said, just listen for the like the steam coming out. And then once you have repaired all of the pipes, you're going to go ahead and go back in and restart the reactor. I think you have two minutes to do this, or three minutes. Uh, but once you've done that, you will head over to the uh, mainframe. And I hack into the computer, like I said, uh, so that I can change the targeting of the turrets. I destroyed the one that was in the room that w with me, but um, I backed out because I couldn't find any more spots to reset my tar uh, my tries. But I removed the, pram uh, the targeting parameters from the turrets, let them kill a couple enemies, and then I start going to town on mainframe cores. So in this area you have to destroy quite a few mainframe cores. Uh, they're kind of scattered throughout the, the entire area. You can get about 70, or you can get about 25% of the mainframe cores in this first area alone. Uh, it'll get down to 75% and it will open up the doors behind me, the laser grid. So you can see that the laser grid is gone now. I go ahead and destroy the rest in this area and through this door right here, there's a turret. I destroy that. And then a few more mainframe cores out here. So on to the next area. I go ahead and destroy the few that are in this area. These laser turrets are not connected to the turrets that I shut off a minute ago. Uh, usually before I move on into an area, I just go ahead and try to shut off turrets. You can also shoot the mainframe cores if you don't feel like going into the room. Uh, and you have ammo to spare, I guess, if you don't feel like getting shot. Uh, and if you head to the left, there's a few more mainframe cores. And then the mainframe access terminal. This is where you can actually turn off all of the turrets in the mainframe room, which is pretty helpful if you have... Oh, well, first I remove their targeting parameters so that they can do a little bit of damage in that room for me. And... Then, once the shooting has stopped, I go back, actually, and, uh, I end up, apparently I didn't go back. I thought that I went back and I'd shut off the turrets, but, apparently not. But, uh, when you go this way, you can lockpick your way into the room. Uh, enemies will start to spawn once you really enter this area. But you can just continue along this wall, basically destroying as many mainframe cores as you can. And then I get caught by this Assaultron trying to be sneaky. But just continue to destroy mainframe cores in this area until you finally get the mainframe down to zero. So now that you've destroyed all the enemies in the or all of the mainframe cores, it'll send you to the operating center, or that is the operating center. It'll send you to the storage room. So the first thing you're gonna do is look around for mainframe cores. Uh, I went ahead and removed the parameters from the turrets, and let them kill a lot of enemies, turn them off, go in and look around for mainframe cores. You need 15 right there. I counted. I had eight. So get a few more. 
and you need 15 in total. You can also, uh, when you get to the doors, the destroyed mainframe cores that you remove from this area, you can actually go repair. So if you can't find them, you can always repair the ones that you remove from here. But I just find it easier to remove the, or to find all the uh, craft, or the, I'm sorry, find all of the regular mainframe cores, not the damaged ones, uh, before actually even coming over here. So now that you have all 15 and not miss one by accident, that's right in front of you. Once you have all 15 in place, you'll go ahead and hit continue, security door control, and open the door towards the launch room. So into the next area, you'll see I turn on the turrets and let them start going to town. Uh, so you can turn off the launch commander or reset their targeting uh, parameters as well. Uh, the, I have an issue right here in the menu. It just wasn't loading fast enough and I was spamming X, so it was having a real hard time. But you see, I go ahead and activate those. I let them fight for a little bit. Uh, eventually, uh, it usually leaves just one enemy left, the Assault Trine Invader, which is probably the hardest enemy in this whole area in general. Uh, it's the only enemy that has killed me in the past. I've actually been through like three or four nuclear silos and just messed up. But um, once you've cleared this room, you're going to go ahead and you're going to go up to the top floor. You can read some of these things if you'd like. Uh, I had already I had already looked through all of these things, so um, I don't know why I thought that I wanted to look through these again. You initiate launch prep. So what it's going to do is it's going to start bringing out these robots that will start to initiate launch prep. It'll bring out one. It'll bring out the section chiefs individually, basically to their areas, and you just have to defend them while they initiate launch prep. And enemies will spawn basically the entire time. Uh, if you have any turrets that are left, an issue I've had is that it won't let me deactivate the turrets after I've removed the targeting parameters. Uh, I've seen that happen a handful of times. Uh, here's me putting purified water on my wheel so that I can get health from those because stim packs are hard to find. Um, but. I go ahead and destroy some of the turrets that I left alive, and you'll see that these robots are still spawning. Uh, I just continue to kill the enemies that are spawning in, attempting to kill the robots that I have coming out to initiate the launch prep. And it's about a quarter of the way already. The second and third uh, robots have spawned. And soon the fourth and fifth will. But you basically just uh, guard these guys until they hit 100%. Uh, there's not a lot of enemies that spawn. Uh, this is actually one of the easier portions of this whole... Basically a raid, that's probably what I would call this. Um, but, yeah. Once you have the launch prep hit 100 percent i'll go ahead and explain this now so it's going to give you an option to place a key card or you have to place a key card on the left hand side of the launch area you have to place or you have to go over and type in a code on nuka crypt it's going to give you the key letters section that you'll put the key letters that are available to you in the white springs bunker and then you'll put the letters that and the numbers that you have on your silo codes. It'll give you options, like multiple codes that you're going to have to try to type in. You're going to go to nukacrypt.com to find all that information and just follow the prompts on there. But, like I said, I thought enemies were spawning in right here because of the noises. But enemies stop spawning once launch prep hits 100%. Uh, you almost always get a a mission reward because it's considered a uh, an event. Um, like I said, you will go ahead and place a key card into the key card receptacle, 
and you will go over to the keypad and I go through a couple of the codes that I had. I had four available codes on NukaCrypt. So I go through three of mine. I had brought four key cards because I had four possibilities. Um, if you do mess up a code, you can like clear or click back if you've accidentally, like the bottom left is to clear the whole code back is on the bottom right it'll delete the previous number but once you hit that eighth number in there's no deleting anything there's no like enter option it just automatically enters it so you have to really try to not to mess up this but thankfully it was my third code that eventually worked for me so once it actually gives you access, you'll go ahead to the the targeting and you'll pick the location that you're going to bomb. You can see that there's a big area of the game that you can't actually bomb. The area is protected uh, more than likely because it's such a low area, like low level area. So then it warns the whole game that you've launched a nuke. Whenever you be uh, beat I am become death, you get all sorts of uh, loot. But if you just go upstairs, take a left-hand turn, there's a sign that says to the surface. There's a crate full of loot for you, a shelf with some ammo and stuff like that that you can grab on your way out if you really want to. I grabbed it. I wasn't too worried. And then you can head out of the nuclear silo and you see that it takes you straight to a viewing platform uh, if you found these mysterious buttons scattered around the world uh, inside of porta potties that's exactly what those are um, something that I will say that you guys are gonna witness here in a second is that as soon as I launched that nuke uh, went into my inventory started to drop stuff that I could so that I could fast travel to ground zero because I was trying to get that achievement my game crashed, so I actually had to go back and launch another nuke. Um, thankfully, I didn't know this, but if you've launched one nuke with the right code and you have a key card and you go back into the nuclear silo for that week, like without having to decrypt it again, uh, because it resets every Monday that I've noticed so far, you have to type in or you just have to give a key card. You don't have to type in a new code. Uh, it's just put a key card in and it lets you launch a nuke. There's like a three hour timer on there. Uh, if you back out, since mine crashed, it actually just let me launch another one. Uh, but it still did complete the achievement for I Am Become Death. It did complete the, uh, the missions I Am Become Death. And Death From Above started again, obviously, because now it's considered a mission or an event but you can see where the like blast zone is going to be before the nuke drops you can fast travel into the blast zone i'll tell you now you will die if you're within the blast zone i did this on purpose you can hear me i'm talking to my friends in the background it's sped up so it sounds kind of weird but uh, i fast traveled into the blast zone and ran away because there was a ton of scorch beasts and i didn't want to die before the nuke dropped so I ran over here, had my friend, who was level 12, fast travel to me so he could witness the nuke that I just dropped. Uh, that's another thing. I did the second nuke that I dropped also solo, and that's because my friend was only level 12, so he didn't have the story beat, and he didn't have the ability to... Um, He didn't have the ability to go down in the nuclear silo, but you can see right there, I basically instantly died. My game practically froze as soon as the nuke got close enough to the ground. That's something I've noticed for a lot of people whenever they're playing and they drop a nuke. Uh, it almost always uh, freezes the game for a second, if not crashes the game, because it's crashed for me before the nuke even dropped, while it launched. Um, but yeah, that's basically how you... Track, silo codes, key cards, uh, how you... There's also Nuka Crypt to help you decipher 
uh, the codes for the nukes and also how to get through the nuclear silo to launch a nuke. So hopefully this is helpful to someone. I understand that people don't like this game, so I expect people to already be in the comments uh, bitching about this, just being in existence. Uh, I'm sorry that you don't enjoy a game that I enjoy, but um, I've been enjoying it. And hopefully this helped someone launch a nuke, finish I and become death, or do whatever. And yeah, got a couple more videos, builds coming for you guys. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.